This video focuses on the sampling distribution of the proportion, which is a technique in statistics used to address qualitative or categorical data. Recall from class that we viewed a simulation. In that simulation, we had some population of Reese's species. In that population, 40% of the Reese's are orange. We draw a number of samples, in this case 250 samples, each one of size 50. So in other words, what we've done is we've essentially bought bags of Reese's, 250 bags of Reese's pieces, each bag containing 50 candies. We then chart in each bag what is the proportion of the candies that are orange. In this particular bag, 40% of the, of the candies were orange. The histogram then basically represents the proportion of orange candies in each of the bags, in each sample. Notice at this one end we have about three Reese's, which had a proportion of orange at about 25%. At the other end we had a number of samples that had between 55 and 60% orange. In general, most of the bags, most of the samples, have about 40% orange, which is the same as, this, as the population proportion. Okay, if the following two conditions are met, namely, you have a random sample of size n, it's drawn from the population, and the sample is sufficiently large, which is defined as one that satisfies the inequalities n times p is greater than 10 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 10. And in these inequalities, p is the proportion of successes in the population or the population proportion. If these two conditions are met, then the distribution of sample proportions, which is this histogram of sample proportions, is approximately normal, has a mean that's equal to the population proportion, and has a standard deviation which is equal to this expression. The big idea here is that we have a normal distribution if these conditions are met. Okay, now let's focus on an application of this, of this information. College algebra, which, is, which are, includes topics from algebra 1 and 2, is required of many majors on campus, and based upon five years of data, 54% of all students enrolled in college algebra receive a passing grade in the course. A random sample of 1,000 students from, from these five years is selected. So, what we know is, we know that 54% of all students during these five years pass the course, so P, which is, again, the proportion of successes in the population is 54%, or 0.54. A random sample of size 1,000 is selected, so N is 1,000. Okay, what is, the what is the probability that in this sample of 1,000, fewer than 500 of the students receive a passing grade? The question asks for the probability that fewer than 500 of the, the thousand students in the sample pass the course. So p hat, which is the sample proportion, the proportion of successes in the sample, is 500 out of 1,000. So 500 out of 1,000 students pass the course, or p hat is 0 .0, is 0.5. We know that we should use the sampling distribution of the proportion in general because the data is qualitative. We're charting whether or not the student has passed the course. We're not recording their grade. We're saying, did you pass or did you not pass? Yes or no. So the data are qualitative or categorical. Okay. The sampling distribution of the proportion for a sample of 1,000 students has the following properties. The mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population proportion, the proportion of all students that pass the course, which is 0.54. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution is using the equation 0 0.0158. Okay, since the sample of a thousand students was randomly selected, n times p, which is a thousand times 0 0.54, is 540, which is bigger than 10, n times 1 minus p, which is a thousand times 
0.46 is 460, which is also bigger than 10, we know that the sampling distribution of the proportion is approximately normal. Okay, so now I always advocate that you visualize the problem. We've got a normal population, of a normal distribution rather, of sample proportions. It has a mean of 0.54, which is the same as the proportion of all students that pass college algebra. We want to find the probability that that sample proportion is 0.50 or less. So we're looking for this red region. To determine this probability, we need to find the z-score. And the z-score is the sample proportion minus its mean, which is 0.54, over the standard deviation. That's negative 2.53. From the z-table, you uh, find the probability associated with 2.53, which is 0.4943. The table always gives you what's between the mean and the score of interest. But we're looking for this red region, so we subtract 0.4943 from 0.5. You get 0 0.0057. So, the probability that fewer than 500 of the students in the sample pass college algebra is 0.0057. It's actually quite small. If you want to check your work, you could use the Rossman Chance Normal Applet. And I just did the same thing. The mean is 0.54, the mean of the sampling distribution. The standard deviation, which we calculated, is 0 0.0158. The value we're, that we're interested in is 0.5, which is the sample proportion. A z-score of negative 2.53. Again, the probability of 0 0.0057. Okay, here's a second question based on the sampling distribution. What's the probability that the percentage of college students in the sample that receive a passing grade is more than 3% from the overall population proportion or percentage of 0.54 or 54%? So in other words, if we, if we collect a sample of 1,000 students, what's the chance that we have 51% or less or 57% or more values that are 3%, 0 0.03 away from the mean of 0.54. Okay, as in problem one, we have a normal distribution of sample proportions, that's our sampling distribution, a mean of 0.54, which is equal to the proportion of all students that pass the course, Standard deviation of 0 0.0158. Okay, so we need to find the z-score for each of these two sample proportions. For 0.51, it's the sample proportion minus the mean divided by the standard deviation is negative 1.9. For 0.57, we also get a z-score of 1.9. 1.9 um, from the z table. The, the probability corresponding to that is 0 0.4713. But again, we're looking for not the regions between 0 0.51 and 57, but outside of that. So we subtract 0 0.4713 from 0.5 in each case and get 0 0.0287. So the probability that fewer than 51% or more than 57% of the students in the sample pass college algebra. You would add these two probabilities. So it would be 0 0.0287 plus 0 0.0287 or 0 0.0574. So this is about a 6% chance that if we collect a random sample of size 1000 that less than 51% of the students pass or more than 57% of the students pass. Again, from the Rossman Chance applet, a mean of 0.54, a standard deviation of 0 0.0158. We want to find the probability that we are less than 51% or greater than 57%. The probability outside is 0 0.0576. Okay, the final question we're going to answer is an inference question. And this is very similar to what occurs in educational research. 
A new technology-rich method of teaching algebra, college algebra is used in several sections of the course this semester. A total of 76 students are enrolled in the sections, and of these students, 48 receive a passing grade. Based upon these data, do you believe that the percentage of all students that pass the new version of the course is greater than 54 percent? So in other words, you want to know if the new version of college algebra results in a higher pass rate for students. Okay, it's known from the initial problem that the percentage of all students that pass college algebra is 54 percent. Basically what this question is asking is, assuming that the percentage is unchanged, in other words, let's assume that there's no difference between the old version of college algebra and the new version of college algebra. If that's the case, how likely would it be that we find a sample percentage of 0.487, excuse me, 48 divided by 76, which is 63.16%? Now, we want to know if the success rate is improved. We have the population proportion, the proportion of all students, we're going to assume is unchanged, is still 0.54. We found a sample proportion, a proportion in our 76 students of 0.6316, or 63.16%. We're looking for evidence that the proportion of successes has increased. So what we want to do is we want to find the probability of the sample percentage of 63.16 or more, because we're looking for evidence of an increase in the proportion of successes. So. The probability we're seeking corresponds to this probability on the, on the left-hand side. Okay, the sampling distribution for this case is similar to the ones in problems 1 and 2. The mean is still 0.54 because we're assuming that the proportion of successes for all students is unchanged. The standard deviation is slightly different because instead of a sample of 1,000, we now have a sample of 76. So the new standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 0 0.0572. Okay, using this information, and again visualizing the picture, we want to find the probability associated with 0.6316, so we need to find the z-score of 0.6316, which is the score itself, the sample proportion, minus the mean, 0.54, over the standard deviation, which we calculated earlier. And that's 1.6. From the z-table, the probability associated with 1.6 is 0.4452, but we don't want that region. We want the region that is 0.6316 is or greater. So we'd subtract 0.4452 from 0.5, and get 0 0.0548. So what does this say? Assuming that the technology-rich version of college algebra results in no change in the pass rate, in other words, we're going to call that the skeptic's hypothesis, then the probability of, ob of obtaining the sample proportion, if there's no change, is 5.48%. Now that's very close to our threshold of 5%, our threshold for what we consider rare but it's still slightly more. So, since the percentage, the, the chance of finding the sample proportion of 0.6316 or more is about 5.48%, and since this is not less than the threshold for rare, which is 5%, we conclude that we have no evidence that the technology-rich version of college algebra results in higher pass rates among all students. Finally, we need to check to make sure that we could actually do these problems, this final problem. We need to check that we actually have a, a normal sampling distribution. Okay, so there's a number of checks, a number of items that need to be checked. First of all, note that the students in the two sections are not randomly selected. It was not given in the problem itself. But the question is, are these students representative of students in, in general? We have no reason to believe that the students in these sections differ from all other college algebra students. So we're going to essentially give ourselves the, the uh, 
the randomness, the random selection of students. Okay, again, assuming that the proportion of all students that pass the course is still 54%, then n times p, which is the sample size times the population proportion, is 41.04, it's bigger than 10. n times 1 minus p is 76 times 0.46, which is 34.96, also bigger than 10. Thus, the sampling distribution of the proportion is normal for a sample of 76 students. That means that the procedure used for this problem is valid.